Hello everyone, uh, welcome to another primetime funk mod experience. Um, so today we are going to be putting together um, a new screen kit. I guess another new one. <laughs> um, this one I uh, picked up from AliExpress, though um, there are some more local sites carrying it in the States um, and Canada. A handheld Legend, Retro Game Repair Shop, uh, Retro Modding, I'm sure these guys are all carrying this by now. Um, but it is a simpler drop-in screen. The, the IPS ones now are simple um, because there's a ton of pre-made shells for them. Um, but the IPS ones are still um, <laughs> a bit of a thing. Uh, they're big and um, they take a lot of power. So somebody else... Um, I think pretty much the same people who made the, the previous one-chip models... Um, like I have one for one of my Game Boy Pocket screens that's actually a low power draw. Um, and so it actually works pretty well with flash carts, for example, and even uh, rechargeable 1.2 via batteries on a pocket. So yeah, there's some, some stuff to be said for this. Now, I don't know if I'm going to stick with that particular tack um, as I go through, because there's some existing fixes for this where you can actually bump up the brightness and therefore a bump up the power usage a bit and I think I'm probably gonna end up doing that thing it still looks like it's a pretty easy uh, pretty easy install um, but uh, there will be a little bit of soldering and I think I'm probably going to learn from people who came before me and uh, do a little bit of trimming on the shell so I don't want to get too nuts but um, this is going to be a pretty gorgeous unit when I'm done and I've been really looking forward to, to getting this and putting this one together because it's going to round out my, my clear classic collection. So let's get down to it. Um, okay, first off, we might as well go through. And um, based on how this thing sits, you're supposed to put this guy in, uh, the thin side. And there's not really any way to avoid the, the tape aspect. Um, but the only thing is that when you actually put this in, like, you can lay the tape on top of all of these, like, edges and stuff here, but I don't know why you'd want to. So I think I'm still going to go through and actually do some, some decent trimming. Um, I'll probably move some of this more sensitive stuff aside as well. So, um, I'm probably not going to get too nuts. I think I'm just going to go with the, the flush cutters and, um, and just uh, tighten it up a little bit with the... Uh, craft knife. I don't think I'll even bring out the Dremel this time because the whole idea was this was supposed to be pretty simple. So, so I think I'm going to go with the, um, what do we got here? Ah, there we go. I stored you aside for future use. So pretty much the chisel blade, which will be very, very useful in this particular case. I wish I'd had this for all of my previous mods, but the uh, the slight upgrades I did recently to my tools are paying off big time. So we'll set that one aside. We'll come back to that. So first off, let's just get uh, let's get the trimming out of the way after we set aside the sensitive stuff. Um, well, there's not really any other way around it. Got my, uh, my new flush cutters. We're going to use that to take care of the, the raised edges because there's a lot of them. And honestly, I, uh, even when I heard that it didn't require any alteration whatsoever, I was a little skeptical, um, because I have done so many of these now. And there's a lot of little finicky stuff inside. So if you're actually going to be setting anything down, you really kind of got to... Clear some space. So, as with any time you're cutting, especially into like a new shell for a new Game Boy, and probably one where you waited for this particular shell for a while to come in the mail, don't get too overzealous. <laughs> You want to you want to clean it up and make room for what you need, but the more you take off, uh, the more you can't put back if you get ahead of yourself. 
So. And I'll show you a little bit more of why I am I'm doing this in a bit. We'll put the pieces together and uh, get an idea of why the trimming is probably going to end up with a better result. Yeah, so I did some reading on this. Uh, a couple other people have actually already gotten to it. There's there's some videos up already about it, but and that's where I learned about the uh, the extra brightness solder job and the uh, how the trimming is still probably a good idea. Now, honestly, like I could really even just leave that. Uh, I don't think I can. Yeah, there's still a lot of little ledge on there that's going to mess with even just being able to to set down the adhesive. Ugh, I don't like using adhesive at all on the best of days, but it looks like that's kind of really the only way that this package works. So, if one were wanting to, you could leave well enough alone just after doing this, but just for the sake of sanity, it's probably a good idea to smooth it out a bit. Always point away from yourself and make sure you're not getting too nuts with how deep you're going. You just want to kind of smooth it out, not break new ground. If you come upon too much resistance, I would say just go back to the flush cutter and take care of that. As is. You don't want to dig through half of the case. Half of the shell before you actually get to doing any installing. Now, if I were feeling my oats, I'd just bring out the, uh, the Dremel and smooth that out. But I don't think we really need to get overly fancy. Just make sure you got a smooth result. You know, a more conventional shape might actually do a bit of a better job here. tip. Dang it. Once you know how. Okay, I'm clearly going to be bringing out the Dremel and just smoothing that out a little bit just for the sake of it looking good in the end because this is this is one that's been in progress for a while so give me a second I'm just going to gather up the stuff I need here okay so for this, I use this little ball head, which is pretty sweet, and it gets some pretty nice results um, when you actually want things to, to actually like clean up cuts instead of just uh, I just got this new fancy Dremel recently, so I kind of want to make use of it. And if you can, why not?
Okay, my apologies. I eh, skipped ahead a little bit because my um, camera stopped kind of working. It uh, didn't record a little chunk. So what you missed uh, was <laughs> me finishing the uh, the cuts and uh, polishing up the, the edging with the Dremel. So it actually still looked pretty clean behind. Um, and flattening this out a lot. And then I took the... Uh, Oops, other side. I put this guy in. So I wanted to lay it down to see if it went flat, which it is generally. And I actually took a little bit off the bottom there because they uh, included a couple of little acrylic spacers that are actually supposed to sit in there and actually space out how this thing fits and sits. So you, you put them in. Now that there's a little bit of adhesive exposed, I'm not going to take the rest of this off. I don't really want to break this screen. I might try and see if I can do all of it without having an adhesive in there. But I am definitely going to actually take off the bottom part and then fit in the acrylic spacers that were included. So this is where they're supposed to go. If we take a look at the online instructions there, they're pretty clear with that too. So I can still take off the rest of this when I see fit. But for now, I'm going to leave that. So I think I'm going to actually move over to a, uh, another fairly important piece uh, that I did off camera <laughs> when I didn't know it was off camera. So I have prepped this as much as I am ready to for the moment. So we're going to set the, uh, the front piece aside and I'm going to come back to this guy. So... Ever want a good drinking game? Just uh, sit down and every time I say the word so in one of these videos, uh, take a shot and then call an ambulance because you'll be dead by two hours in. So this is a 40 pin. Um, they include two pieces in there. So in the package, you've got a 32 and a 40. Mine is a 40. So we're going to stick with that. We are going to test this and... Uh, because anybody will tell you that if you do not test the screen, <laughs> then you're kind of dumb. Uh, which I have done before. I, I know the rule, but every once in a while I'm just like, eh, what are the chances? And then I get to the end and something's not working. So we're going to do this right now. I'm going to insert. that nice and snug without breaking anything and then we're going to uh, use some batteries uh, kind of put this together and see how she goes so just make sure you're putting it in the right way Yeah, when you're testing with batteries, um, once you've got it sorted out, it, it's supposed to be that you can see the screen laid out um, facing you this way. So if whatever version of it that you're doing doesn't end up with you having the screen facing outward when you're done, um, then you've got it in the wrong way. <laughs> so that tells me most likely we had it in the wrong way. So let's put this piece together first. Clip that into place. And since the screen is facing up, this tells us that this is the way that it's supposed to go in. Black side up on this one. Okay. Ye old ladders. And let's 
test. Oh, would you look at that? Well, okay, we've got a working screen and board. So we're going to uh, turn that right back off again. Take it apart and uh, now we can continue. Always a good exercise to make sure that you are not laboring in vain. I'm probably going to detach. Both of these. Okay. So I'm going to show you something else that happened. We're going to go in tight angle here. Now, if you take a look at this guy right here, maybe we get further back and zoom in. There we go. So that is not how it originally looked. What we've done is I added a bit of solder on this side and there is one connection on this side and two on this one. Now, I may need to actually just double check that I soldered properly on that anyways, um, because I might not have an actual full connection. I might have a dry, dry joint there. So you connect this primary one. There's only one output here and you connect it to the one up here because there's two points. Um, so I actually laid a little piece of wire across and joined them. But I think I need to add a little bit of solder to this piece here. So let's, uh, might as well do that part while we're paying attention. second. Yeah, see it's, it's laying on that piece, but I don't think it's actually got a, a full connection. It was still moving around a little bit. Can't hurt to just add a little bit of solder to that and make sure we've got a solid connection there. Use a fine point. <laughs> Might be better if we just. Yeah, no, it didn't. So it didn't have a real connection there. So we're going to have to add a little bit of solder to that. And then we'll push her back down. We need to add a little bit extra to the. Uh, the pad on this side. Angle, angle, angle. Hmm. Got just a tiny little bit of excess there. Perfect. And now, I'm going to bend that piece of wire back down. So I can just. Now, that wire was already tinned. So I really should just be able to apply a little bit of pressure. There we go. That's what was missing before. Okay, no longer a dry joint, I believe. Sweet. 
There we go. Got to fix that on camera, at least, if not do the first part. Um, now, my disclaimer on this whole thing is that you didn't actually need to do that. If you so choose, you can actually do this entire thing without making any of these modifications. So I chose to cut around here to try and get this to, to fit a bit more flush because I feel like um, it's going to make the screen fit better in the end. Um, but technically speaking, you could just lay this down and just flop over top. Um, I don't really love that, but it's possible. And you could also do the entire job without any soldering because what I did was create um, a bridge on there that's actually going to increase the brightness and the power draw. Um, so yes, it's going to use a little bit more power, but the screen is actually going to be brighter in execution. So I kind of wanted to do that because if we're not getting brighter screens, then why are we even here? So I'm going to pull back a little bit here. And uh, so now the, the pre-prep work is pretty much done. Uh, there's not a lot of other hard things to do. And honestly, you could have just skipped those things. <laughs> so... When I, when I edit this together, I'll probably actually make a point of noting that. Um, no more soldering required. Um, and I think we should just be able to start looking at fitting that screen and getting this all put together. So I think I'm going to, just because we don't want to have anything obscuring our view, I'm going to take the, uh, separate the screen and that PCB. Come on, gently. Let's see how she fits together now. So it's supposed to go all the way over to the right side. All the way over to the right, or I guess stage stage left, and push against, and then also be flush at the bottom with these two pieces of acrylic, which I seem to have accomplished without having to take off all the rest of that adhesive. So I think I am actually officially centered. Again, be careful exactly how hard you apply pressure. I think what would make me feel better about this, I might put like a little spacer in here if I've got one. I wonder if the spacers I've got might actually help with that. One sec. Yeah, no. Not that one, at least. Well, what do you know? I have a spacer that might actually work for that. It actually works perfectly. Go figure. Without forcing it, that's just gonna keep it in the proper spot. Fantastic. Um, if you don't have an extra spacer, then, you know, you can just uh, use the adhesive and be careful with the application the first time. But I still don't trust the tape, so we'll see how that goes. Now we've got, it's flush with the acrylic, it's flush with the side. This is all in place, I believe.
this extra spacer I've got actually has a little bit of adhesive, so might as well use that to hold it in place. That really is handy. Okay. Now I don't need to trust the tape. That's actually going to fit quite nicely. Okay. Man, that's nice and snug. Without incident. There we go. One of the cool parts about this whole thing is that you do not need insulation on this back. <laughs> so um, normally we'd be pulling out the captain tape and just going nuts on this kind of stuff. Or some of the kits would come with like an insulation film that doesn't really have enough adhesive to be useful. Uh, I would say what I'm going to do most likely. Maybe we'll see how that thing fits. I'm still probably going to use a little bit of just plain old double-sided tape on the back of the board. Might as well just cut a little bit off of what came with it, so, so that stuff doesn't seem too nuts. Just a single piece. So I don't have to cut into my personal supply. I'm going to confess something. There was a very brief period where I, I thought maybe just about doing this mod and then not not making a video to put up on the channel, but I'm like, man, if you don't put up a video featuring one of the, the newer screen kits, what are you even doing this for? So I caught myself. I asked some, some better people than me, and they... They felt I owed it to uh, owed it to myself and my audience to do this as well. There we go. So that's not gonna roll around too much. I think uh, we probably still want to use some captain tape on here, just because every conversation ends with use the captain tape.
you are never going to regret putting a little bit of extra captain tape down because it protects against shorts and it saves you from yourself. Doesn't mean you can't trim a little bit if you've got some excess though. Okay, so we, yeah, have one more step to do. We're going to remove the spacer for a brief second. We're going to thank our lucky stars that we did not uh, go too crazy with the adhesive. And we are going to remove the film. back in the same position we left it before. And we'll put in our spacer. Okay, so I don't want to hammer home the point that I'm right about the adhesive, but I'm right about the adhesive. Don't use it unless you absolutely have to. Okay, and now we have a fully functional screen that is sitting a lot nicer because we actually did trim down the surrounding area before we before we went nuts. Okay, the rest is going to be pretty basic. A uh, good D pad, don't forget the diffuser, that's a commonly missed bit. That means you have to take the entire thing apart again to put it back in. Your DMG red buttons. That's good, I'll put the rest on after.
dry wings. There we go. Now, some of this is going to be a little bit more difficult than it needs to be because I have not threaded this shell yet. <laughs> uh, so I'll most likely have to do some wicked tightening the first time around. Gotta get it wicked tight. without cracking the shell. Once they're tight enough, you know. So that one will be, yep, battery. Battery bay. We'll see. Okay. Gonna fit nice. Okay, so let us get our I need to have a quick look. Is the where this thing is supposed to go and where it's supposed to fit is a bit of a mystery to me. It feels like that's the natural spot, but I think lots of things are natural and turn out to not be. So, in one sec. Turns out my instincts were correct. Um, it kind of folds in on itself, it goes up in there, but it does need some sort of an adhesive. So I think we'll probably just end up using the, uh, the double-sided tape provided again. Because it's been okay thus far. fall off. I can live with it. Um,
The only thing I'm wondering about after the fact is uh, if I should have put any foam or anything down there, but that board is pretty tight. And with the captain over top of it, I don't think that thing's moving around in there at all. So I think that's pretty good. So, where do we find ourselves now? I think we find ourselves at the other end of this. Let's get our batteries on there. I've yet to decide if I'm gonna modify the shell to be able to do um, battery packs. Whoa, <laughs> it was own. <laughs> well, we have our answer, that's, that's always nice. And there is a certain authenticity to using yes, the, uh, the good old rechargeables. But the thing is that uh, I could probably still do that, uh, even if I do a little bit of modification to the inside of that, uh, that shell. So, but we'll leave the batteries for now. Looks good. Before we put the screen or the lens on, we double check to make sure that it's centered. And it is, that looks good. And it is definitely brighter. Yeah, I definitely had a, uh, didn't do an awesome job on the solder the first time. So this is looking awesome. And that's pretty much the same dimensions as the original screen, but with an, a great backlight. So ah, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy already. Okay. <laughs> Let's get any dust off of the screen area. I think there might've been like an incidental tiny little fingerprint spot. I'm going to use a completely new microfiber cloth to clean that off. Already getting more dust in and around. Uh, let's get the, uh, the fingerprint off and then we will at that that is gorgeous now this isn't for anybody else this build is for me so I'm going to very much enjoy Oh yeah, that is fantastic.
yeah, I'm really glad I went with the extra brightness setting. Um, that's really sweet. Okay, let's find something cool. Something vibrant. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Okay. Well, everybody, thanks for walking through that one with me again. Um, I'm kind of a fan of that screen. I, I definitely noticed the colors are a little bit cooler on this one than they are on the um, the standard, like, funny playing IPS ones. But um, the ease of installation for the average Joe... Um, I still say there's definitely room for someone to be able to uh, just want to backlight the one that they've already got without doing any other alterations to it. For me, this was not like my special shell. This is um, a project in the making for a little while, but I think that uh, for someone who wants to modify one that they already have and like the precious shell that they had in their childhood, then this would be the way to go. Um, you can still do it all without any of the alterations that I did or any of the soldering. Um, that's just because I can, so I did. <laughs> well, um, thanks so much for joining me to uh, to build the last of my clear collection. I'm going to be posting some pictures and um, making a big stink about this one online, I'm sure, because uh, I'm pretty darn proud of that. That's just beautiful. Okay, thanks so much, and uh, we'll see you soon.